Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Now look, I promise you, I am not gonna act silly throughout this whole video, but I need you to come into the room because there's some things that we need to talk about from a licensed therapist perspective, all about the movie Bad Boys, Ride or Die. Hello, hello, everybody. If you are new here, hey! But if you are a returning subscriber, you already know how my review videos go. You know there's gonna be some spoilers all up in, through, and around this video. So if you have not seen the movie, go ahead and press pause on this, go watch it, and then come back so we can chat about it in the comments. Let me know, what did you guys think about Bad Boys 4, essentially, ride or die? And also, let me know which movie out of the Bad Boys franchise that you like the most. I think if I had to choose, I like Bad Boys 2 the best. Now, even though I just said I like Bad Boys 2 the best, this movie was really, really good. I can't tell y'all how good I thought this movie was between the action and the comedy and all of the shooting and the... It was just really good. You can tell that this movie had a huge budget. But there are some things that I saw in this movie that I was like, yep, we gotta talk about this. The first thing being trauma. Obviously, as a police officer, you are experiencing trauma and traumatic events every single day. There probably isn't a day that goes by, especially for Mike and Marcus, <laughs> where there isn't them trying to shoot somebody, somebody trying to kill them, somebody dying, lost, being worried about their own family. There's just so much trauma that happens when you are in this field. And we love a good, you know, law enforcement who's here to actually protect and serve. But this really just shows that they are not exempt from all of the difficulty that this job brings. So think about it. It's a consistent cycle of grief and loss. They are at some point in the five stages of grief at any given time. And if we really think about it, we know that in previous bad boys that Mike got shot, he almost died and lost his life. Remember in, I think it was the second one where Marcus got shot by Mike in the butt. <laughs> so he got shot too. And while I'm laughing, it's not a laughing matter when you experience this level of trauma. Because not only does it impact you and your family, but it also impacts other people around you. I have talked multiple times about vicarious trauma on this channel, especially with everything going on in the Black Lives Matter space or everything going on with celebrities and abuse, I have been telling you guys to protect your eyes and your ears and what you watch because vicarious trauma is real. And even though it did not happen to you directly, it still can impact you. So the same thing is true for Mike and Marcus in regards to all of the trauma that they are experiencing, let alone the fact that Captain was shot and compound, right? Layers and layers of layers of traumatic experiences. The second thing that we absolutely have to talk about is Mike's panic attacks. Now, I'm glad that they included something about mental health or some type of issue here because that's very real. And we see with all of the trauma that I just talked about how it's impacting Mike in a very physiological way. Know that if something is starting to impair multiple areas of your life, it's a huge issue. So if work is impacted, if your family is impacted, if your finance is impacted, if your personal hygiene is impacted, if different things in your area, your parenting, your skills, your marriage, all of those things. So if that is starting to have a massive impact on your life, then that is an indicator that this is a big issue that needs to be dealt with. Now, even though they made little jokey jokes about, you know, him going to therapy, I can give you some resources and he was in denial and didn't want to go and didn't want to do it. I think that they could have included some element of him trying to seek help. So at least going to talk to somebody, at least sitting down in somebody's therapy office, at least doing something to say that he was trying to rectify the issue. Now in previous movies, we saw that Mike was actually having sex with his previous therapist. So I don't know, maybe they shouldn't have concluded that element in here, especially if he was gonna wind up sleeping with her. And while Mike's panic attacks were very real, I think that they could have done a better job at depicting what that looked like. It seemed like when he was experiencing the panic attacks that he just got a little off balance, that he got his vision got a little fuzzy a little bit, and he just was unsure about what was going on. But we know that panic attacks and anxiety shows up very differently in the body for any and everybody, right? A lot of people receive shortness of breath. A lot of people can get headaches. A lot of people start sweating. Their palms are sweating. 
sweating, their face is sweating, they can't breathe, they want to escape, they want fresh air. There's just so many different physiological things that happen. Your vision can get blur and i don't know if they did the best depiction of what a panic attack looks like because it really wasn't given what a real panic attack was given this is why these movies as a side note needs to have therapists on staff go ahead and call me so i could be on staff so i can help y'all make sure that y'all are depicting mental health issues and mental illness and personality disorders correctly but I digress. I think Mike's panic attacks was due to a number of different things, right? He was the one who was right there when Captain passed away. Remember, he had a whole baby by a witch. I don't know if y'all remember. <laughs> so he got this grown kid who he wasn't actively in that child's life. Now that kid is in prison, there's a whole bunch of different things happening there. And let's not forget that Mike just got married. So to think that being a newlywed and being, you know, and turning down your, uh, what's it called? Your player's card. <laughs> Cause you know, he was a player player from the Himalayas. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> That's off of Martin for the people who, <laughs> anywho. So look, he turned down and turned in his player's card to get married. And to think that that doesn't have an impact because that is a major life transition would be fooling you and me. But really what I seen underneath that was brewing and bubbling is the fact that he took some ownership, whether he should have or should not have, of Captain's death. Because he was the one that was right there with him when he passed away, you know, his daughter blamed Mike and that was a whole issue of contention. And so I think there was just like some guilt, some shame that was on the inside of him that he was carrying over. And that's why he was just so hell bent on making sure that he was vindicating the captain, making sure that he went all out to clear the captain's name because he knew that it was eating him alive a little bit and he needed some resolve. So he was still in one of those five stages of grief that we were talking about. The third thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is that there were a lot of non-actors in this movie. I don't know if y'all caught that, but Jay Shetty performed their wedding. If you didn't know, DJ Khaled was in here. If you didn't know, Tiffany Haddish was in here. If you didn't know, the guy who went super duper popular and famous all over social media by not talking and doing eh, <laughs> was in the movie. I think his name is like KB Lame or something. Cabby, please forgive me if I'm pronouncing his name inappropriately. But he was in there. There were so many different creators and people from different genres who wasn't technically or who weren't technically actors that was in this movie. And I thought that was super duper dope. The fourth thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is that there were a lot of spiritual components in this movie. I'm not sure if you guys recognize it, but Marcus, after he had his heart attack, which by the way, can you imagine having a heart attack at your partner's and best friend's wedding? How traumatizing, not only is it for you experiencing a heart attack, but for the couple getting married and everybody that was in attendance. That is a huge thing that can't be glanced over, which is probably why Mike had these panic attacks. But Marcus had this out of body experience where he basically died and went somewhere. I'm not even gonna say it was heaven, <laughs> but he wind up seeing Captain there with a little parrot, sitting on a little tree branch or whatever. And Captain whispered something to him and kind of seemed like he told him a secret. Now, I don't know if I missed it, but I feel like they never said what the secret was or what Captain said. And I thought at some point, Marcus would go back and at least say, hey, yo, Mike, I seen Captain in heaven or hell or whatever it was, because it was real dark and gloomy. It wasn't all light and bright like heaven should be. And he told me this, and this is what we need to do. But he came back out of that experience, basically having all of these newfound revelations about past lives and our souls being immature. And in the past life, you were a donkey and I was your master. And it's like, wait, what? The interesting thing is that he felt like he couldn't die. At what point are you invincible? <laughs> At what point is it that you got these superpowers where nothing is going to hurt 
or harm you. This dude was walking in traffic. This dude was shooting people. This dude was attacking people with no weapon. It's like, bro, what are you doing? You're risking your life. And although he technically didn't die, it was interesting to think that he felt like he had some superpowers where it wasn't gonna happen. And this was low key delusional. And this was low key out of pocket. And this was low key not real. <laughs> Cause if you come back from the dead thinking that you never gonna die again, that just, that was just weird to me. And with all of his health concerns, literally being that he has high blood pressure and probably his blood sugar was jacked up too because he was craving Skittles and <laughs> wanting juice and wanting hot dogs and eating things that he wasn't supposed to be eating. And you would think that a police officer who does all this running, jumping, chasing people, trying to follow criminals would be in their best shape, tip top shape, but it seemed like he wasn't, right? And he put his own life in his own, yeah, his own life in jeopardy. And it's scary to be in. And in real life, everybody has been saying that Martin Lawrence, something is up with him in regards to his health. I didn't know this, but people said he had a stroke years ago and that there is some residue or some residual of that still happening. One, we noticed a significant weight gain and you know, people be, life is life and people have medical issues and things that we're not privy to. So I don't think he has to go on this, you know, announcement that he may not be well or has medical issues. I don't think that he has to do that. It's his own private information in his own life. But I do think that there's some concern because even when I was watching the movie, his eyes weren't looking right. And I'm talking about the white part. The, the white part was like, and it wasn't even red. And it was kind of like a little brown or a little yellow-ish. And I said, mm, his eyes, something, something is off here. So I don't know what type of medical issues he has. He's done interviews telling people and telling the public that he's perfectly fine. There's no issues, nobody needs to worry. But I personally think that there is something more that he's not telling us. And he doesn't technically have to tell us, but I wanted to acknowledge that because when those, when those close-up shots <laughs> in the movie zoomed in, I was like, oh yeah, the eyes are, it's, it's not giving healthy. And also every time that I hear him speak, I don't know why, but I can't get Big Mama's house out of my brain. I don't know if y'all noticed it, but in certain moments of this movie, obviously when he played Big Mama on the other series that he had and the other movies that he had, he dressed as a woman and that person had a certain tone of voice. I hear that coming up every so often throughout the movie. And I'm like, I'm watching Bad Boys, but I'm hearing Big Mama. Like it's, it's weird. The fifth and last thing before I give my final thoughts on this is I just wanna talk about family. I think throughout the whole entire Bad Boys franchise from the first one, did y'all know the first one came out in 95? I wasn't even 10 years old. <laughs> I was like seven, eight-ish when that came out. Like, whoa, that's crazy. Even throughout every single movie, Family was a huge thing. Marcus always had his wife, which happens to be played by another woman, Tasha, um, and not the previous wife that we've seen throughout. I said, oh, it's a new one. Okay, cool. Same one, but new, if that makes any sense. And he always had his daughter. He had his son-in-law, Reggie, there. And his daughter is pregnant now, so he's going to have a grandbaby. So family has always been very important to Marcus. And with Mike, he was a player player, like I mentioned. So he wasn't really caring. And we didn't see any elements about his extended family because he was in these streets. But for him to put down his player card, turn in his player card and get married, that was a huge deal to Mike Lowry. Now, because family is a huge part, we even see the captain who is deceased, his daughter and his granddaughter have a very close knit relationship as well. So that thread was in this movie too. But what I thought would happen, and maybe it's just the marriage and family therapist in me, <laughs> I thought that they were going to pop out pregnant at the end of this. I just knew that Mike and his wife was gone. She was going to just pop out with a little, you know, just a little baby bump. Like, okay, they're having a baby, but that technically did not happen. 
And I can see why, because he already has a son that's on the run. So he already technically does have a child. But it would have been interesting to see him have a child with his new wife. But we can't leave this whole family talk without talking about Reggie. Reggie did not come to play when Reggie who is in the service, okay, got the word that somebody was about to creep up in the house and try to take him, his wife, and his mama-in-law out? Baby, he came with the guns, literally and figuratively. Like, he was taking everybody out. I was in the movie theater like, you better go off, Reggie, go, Reggie. <laughs> but that really surprised me, and that was a very interesting scene. I'm glad that they put that in there because we know that Reggie just had very minimal parts in previous movies. So to see him protect and serve and be taking people out and really have his place in the family was really dope to watch. And one thing Bad Boys is gonna do is in the movie with a family function. Okay, they're gonna be at somebody's barbecue. They're gonna be in somebody's backyard in a pool. They're gonna be kicking and having a good time. So I just love the support, the familial support that has happened throughout every single Bad Boys movie. To quickly give my final thoughts on this, I thought the movie was great, as I mentioned. If you haven't seen it, you should go see it. I think it was a great, great, great movie. There were so many elements in there that obviously I talked to you guys about here, but it was a good way. I'm not sure if there's gonna be another one because y'all know they like to pop out with a Bad Boy, Bad Boys 2, Bad Boys for Life, Bad Boys Ride or Die, what next? What you, bad boys, what you gonna do? Like, what is happening next? Is this the end or no? <laughs> but overall, if I had to give it a rating, I would rate this like an 8.5 out of 10, which I think is very good. So definitely go watch the movie. Go get caught up on the previous movie before you go and watch this one so you can be up to date and reminded on what happened. And then come back and chat with me because it is such a good movie to watch. So thank you so much for taking time to watch this review. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, stick around and watch some of my other movie and TV show reviews. And I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.